welcome. In this lecture on linear data analysis, which has multiple sessions, we'll explore basis vectors of a vector space. The main concepts are what are basis vectors. We'll explore how any vector that's in a vector space has a unique representation using these basis vectors. We'll explore what we mean by orthogonal vectors and by orthonormal basis vectors. And we'll gather orthonormal basis vectors into matrices. One problem that we can think of as we go through this lecture is what's a minimal description of a vector space? So let's recall um, what we mean by a spanning set. And let's suppose that we have a vector space V. So a spanning set, or simply a span of this vector space, is a set of vectors that can be linearly combined. And when we have linear combinations of them, we're able to recreate or touch every vector that's in that vector space. There's no restriction on the numbers of vectors in a span. It will turn out it has to have some certain minimum number, which is closely related to the dimension of the vector space, but there's no maximum number. What properties does a spanning set have? Well, let's suppose that we have a vector space V and that we have specifically n data vectors and that these span the vector space. We'll require that none of these be zero because zero vectors cause us all sorts of problems. One problem which we can see immediately comes from definitions of vector spaces is that for any real numbers that we choose, a linear combination of those spanning vectors has to be in that vector space. That's a straightforward concept. A related concept is that these have to be complete, which is if you give me any new vector C and you say that that's in the vector space, then there are real numbers such that I can reconstruct that vector that you gave me as a linear combination of the vectors in the spanning set. Now, these, as I said, there may be more vectors than are strictly needed, but what it means is I can find a linear combination that will accomplish this. I'm not saying that that linear combination is unique. Now, what do we mean by linear independence? Well, if we recall this definition, it will turn out that it's very closely related to ideas of vector spaces. So again, suppose that we're given n of these vectors and that none of them are zero. What we mean by linearly dependent is that there are real numbers, and they're not all zero, such that we can take those vectors and we can create a zero vector. So that's what we mean by linearly dependent, is that um, we can get the zero vector. Now you can immediately see that if all of these are non-zero and there's some real, there has to be at least one of these w's that's non-zero. Let's suppose for now that it's wn. Well, we could take this wn over to the other side of the equation and that means we could express vector an in terms of these others by dividing through by minus wn. And so linear dependence is defined as we can create the zero vector as a non-trivial combination of these vectors. And then it will turn out that means that we can represent some of these vectors in terms of other vectors. By linearly independent, what we simply mean is their linear independence is very plainly put not dependent. And what that means is there are no such non-zero scalar values, w1 through wn, that create a linear combination in which we can express the zero vector. 